Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're in the student parking lot here at Penn State. We have a beached whale Saab 9.3 V6 behind me. It's the only Saab in the parking lot and it doesn't want to crank. So the owner called me up. He's from Philly. I guess his um, son or daughter goes to Penn State and they're driving this car and now it's a beached whale. So let's see what we can do. So, see key on, dash lights up, this is checking, left front turn signal failure, okay, push in the clutch, six speed manual, and crank it. I heard a loud click, like the starter solenoid engaged. So is it going to be simple as a bad starter? Um, so the owner said he already, himself, took the original starter off, bench tested it, he said it's span, it, it spun fine, better than this uh, replacement one that he got, but that's, you know, that's what I'm told. So, potentially is the engine seized up or not. Let's check the ground on the engine block. So this is just a voltage drop from the battery ground to uh, the engine block while we crank. If that's excessive, we might have a bad ground in the block. 60 millivolts. Um, and then I want to measure the current draw while that when that click happens. If we don't get like 200 amps, the starter's not even trying to turn, we're going right after the starter. If it's excessive voltage, which I don't think it will be, then hopefully, no, the engine, is the engine seized up? I hope not. <laughs> the only code stored in the ECM is P0560 system voltage. So, uh, the, you know, the battery is not drained or anything. It's about 12, 12 volts. You can see right there. Read fault code, 12.2, 12.0. So, the computer's fussing about that. The fact that the starter solenoid clicks means the starter should spin over. Uh, it's not going to be a control problem. So let's um, let's measure that current drop. All right, so I'm just clamped around the negative battery cable. Let's see what that draws when we crank the key. Let me review that footage. All right, this is where the max min feature on the meter comes in handy. So 50 amps min since the current was going, you know, back towards the battery. So the solenoid definitely engaged, but the starter did not spin over. So we have to get to the starter and check for a good feed at the starter, the main positive, you know, um, this right here. Potentially that braided cable could have corroded through, but we have a known good starter, at least I think, we can bench test this pretty easily, and swap it out if it's a bad starter. Alright, let's dive under the car. So, first step is get the silly air pump out of the way, that clears up a little room around the starter. Now, we have access to there's the main positive feed, that's the nut, and the purple control wire. So, test light. I have a good, known good power and ground here coming from the battery, the yellow and the black lead. So if my test light finds a power, it's gonna light up. Let's just make sure we have power on the main starter post. Let's see here. What the heck? Nothing. Well, that's a problem. Huh. Now let's um, connect the test light to battery positive, make sure that starter is grounded. Now, this is just a preliminary check. Obviously the starter, when it's under load, it draws a lot more than 200 milliamps, but you know, if we find a ground, test light's gonna light up. Okay, and we'll just stab the starter here. 
Yes, so the starter body is well grounded. We have to figure out why we have no feed on that positive, on the fat positive cable. That kind of blows my mind. So here's something interesting. What is this little black box here? So we have positive on there, but not here. And you see the little red mark? With something shorted out, what if we just press this button? Okay, that reset it. Hey, look. Now we have positive here, so this must be some kind of circuit breaker. Let's go back to the starter and see if uh, that pin is hot now. All right, let's check this again. Ta -da -da. Wow, so that circuit breaker was for the starter. Interesting. Let's uh, try to crank it and see what the amperage is when we're cranking this engine. By the way, let's just check the oil level before we uh, get too far. Yep, we're right in the middle. That's good. Let me hook up uh, the amp lamp again. All right, here we go. Never seen that before. The starter positive wire on a circuit breaker. Europeans are quirky. They start up and ran. So let's see what the uh, minimum and the maximum amperage was. Good. What the heck? Let's try that again. Okay, we don't want the hold button. 27 amps, max, min. Hmm. By the way, it's charging just fine at 14.3 volts, and I'm sure that low voltage code will be gone. There you go, minus 270 amps. That's an initial crank, so I don't know why that circuit breaker tripped, but that was cause of the customer complaint, no crank.